Welcome to episode number 287 of Destination Linux, a Tux Digital podcast. Whether you're brand new to open source or a guru of sudo, this is the podcast for you. My name is Jill. I'm Michael. And I'm Ryan. And on this week's awesome episode of Destination Linux, we're going to be pimping out our terminals. Yes, we're going to give you all the tips you need to look like an elite hacker, hacksaw, even if you only know apt update and apt upgrade. Then we will be discussing water cooling your Linux laptop. Plus, we have our tips, tricks, and software picks. All this and more coming up right now on Destination Linux to keep those penguins marching. So this week, our feedback comes from Anonymous. If you want to send in your own anonymous feedback, you could go to tuxdigital.com slash contact to get in touch, or you can join the Tux Digital community forum by going to tuxdigital.com and clicking on the forum link at the top of the page. They go on to say, my boys are age seven, nine, and 11 and are wanting to get into computer animation. Do you guys have a recommendation on a starting point? I've used Photoshop and photop.com but I'm a sysadmin and not really a creative type. I found this site that looks pretty good in open source, which is wickededitor.com. Have you seen this or have other suggestions? One of my boys has a Chromebook. One uses a repurposed HP all-in-one with Ubuntu, and another has an Ubuntu Mate machine. Thanks for any tips or suggestions out there. So I would love to give my tips and suggestions, but... Jill actually works in animation, so it would make way more sense way for more Jill sense. to you to take this question and give some answers here. Okay. I actually uh, know about the Wick Editor, and I think it's a great web-based option for, for kids to start learning 2D animation. It is a really nice tool. And uh, I love Pencil 2D as well, especially for new animators. It's a, a, a Linux app that you can find e- easily. I just remember there's a really awesome app called TupiTube. Yeah. And TupiTube is specifically tailored for kids and beginners and even has an Android app as well. And you can post your kids' animations on their website, which I think is really, really cool. So that's one of my top recommendations. And there's also Synfig Studio. It has actually been my go-to for both my beginning and advanced animation students for years. And uh, it's a really great uh, 2D animation tool with easy steps with tutorials as well. So that one's very nice. And there's another web-based option called Ajax Animator that is open source. And it's a simple web-based animation tool. And Ajax is actually good for making animated GIFs and that kind of thing. And of course, we have our lot more advanced animation tools for the future when your kids, uh, after they get comfortable using that piece of software, of course, there is Krita, Krita painting program, which also has some great 2D animation tools. And then Blender, of course, it's not only a 3D animation package, it's a 2D animation package. And you can do 2D with grease pencil and other tools. And another one of my favorites, in fact, this one is, is one that I always show my students every semester, is OpenTunes. OpenTunes is actually a 2D animation software published by Duango and has been customized by Studio Ghibli, famous for <laughs> Totoro <laughs> anime and nice. other of my favorite animes. And they actually use that program for the creation of of their work and have been for many years. It's been around a long time. And there is a port for Linux, but you do have to compile it. And it just takes some time, but it's not hard to do. And it works great and is used in the industry. A lot of, a lot of uh, anime uh, companies and houses have been using uh, OpenTunes for a while So the um, workflow. So sorry to the person who sent that feedback in. Unfortunately, Jill did not have enough things to tell you about as options. Oh. <laughs> Um, so I hope I hope that the few that she gave was enough. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. It was. <laughs> no, it's great. It's great that you had so many. I haven't even heard yeah. of, of half of these. Like uh, yeah. I've used quite a few of them, like Blender and Krita, and yeah. uh, but I've never heard. And I actually read. You said Wick editor, and then I read the domain. I'm like, oh, it is Wick. I I thought it said yeah. Wicked for oh, some reason. Oh, okay. 
okay. It's like, okay. Wick, yeah. It's wick. And I, I just, I play with it earlier. Oh, I thought it was wicked too. Wick's yeah. Wick. Okay. Yeah. Wick editor. But it's, it, it's it, funny because I play with it yeah. and I was like, oh, wow, this is a very impressive for a web app. And like yeah. all these different other options is great. So uh, I, I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm confident you'll find something in that list. <laughs> and if, yeah. you, if you didn't catch what those were, we'll have links in the show notes to check them out. But I didn't give my favorite recommendation, Mike. Yeah, that's, that's, like, that's you know, true. Know. That's true. It's totally Blender. Like the kids should <laughs> totally just start in Blender. <laughs> once they overcome yeah. their hatred for trying to learn animation, then you could move them on to a different hobby. Because yeah, move them to something Blender. easier. And then they're like, okay, yes, yeah, see, this was terrible. Now I can. <laughs> I love but Blender. It's Blender's just got amazing. a big starting Yeah, The learning, learning curve, curve is, is yeah. massive, yeah. yeah. And yeah. also, it's funny when, when Jill, you were talking about Blender, and you say you could do 3D animations and 2D animations, and I was like, and video editing, and 3D modeling, Everything, and yeah. pretty much I whatever do. you want. Yeah. <laughs> and absolutely. motion graphics, it's, like whatever. <laughs> Blender's amazing. Yeah. If, if, if you want to go through the process of learning Blender, you're going to get a lot for that process, but it will take a while to get through that yes. process. <laughs> You know what won't take a while to learn, Michael? I was about to say that exact same that, thing. That, you gonna say it? It was there. I had to give it to you. So good. I was gonna was give good. it to you. Uh, that in was in good. fact, in fact, I do know what that is, Ryan. That is DigitalOcean because this episode of Destination Linux is brought to you by DigitalOcean. Get started right now by going to do.co/tux2022, and you're gonna get a one hundred dollar free credit when you go to that URL. And what you're going to get is access to all of their awesome stuff. So, you know, cloud computing can be, let's say, complex, but, you know, standing up reliable, affordable cloud infrastructure really doesn't have to be. And that's what DigitalOcean offers. You can enjoy a comprehensive portfolio of compute, storage, database, and networking products that put your cloud infrastructure in capable hands so you and your teams can get back to doing what matters most, building world-changing apps that grow your business. And with DigitalOcean, you also get predictable pricing, robust product docs, and services that developers love love that's digital ocean so get you can also get support at every stage of growth whether you're a team of one person or a team of a thousand people with digital ocean you get simple powerful cloud computing at your fingertips and as a listener of the destination next podcast and a member of the tux digital community you can get started for free but actually like i said earlier you can get started better than free because they're gonna be a 100 free credit when you go to do.co slash tux 2022 that's do.co slash tux 2022. So again, go get started with your $100 free credit on DigitalOcean's awesome cloud platform at do.co slash tux2022. And I want to thank DigitalOcean for sponsoring this episode of Destination Linux. Well, you don't have to spend much time in the terminal to use Linux. Once you get comfortable with the terminal, you'll find it's often much easier, more reliable, and more powerful to use the terminal over more most graphical user interfaces. While customizing desktop environments is fun, customizing your terminal makes you extreme! Yes! <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so this week, we're going to give you some tips to make you look like elite hacksaw, even if you only open the terminal once a year. Okay, I am so excited about this topic, but <laughs> I've got to tell you all, I discovered something this week that I can't not bring up on the show. It's just, it's bothering me. <laughs> uh, I, I discovered a couple things. Number one, that Jill and Michael both, when they were making the show notes, spell this word as like 1337H at XOR to say Leet Haxer. And that's mm -hmm. disappointing in itself. You can also <laughs> do h 4 x 0 are. Yeah, this H4 is just you can do, you can do it either either way is optional, you know. But the big disappointment is that <laughs> I <laughs> disappointment. You know, I constantly get made fun of on this show. Uh, Michael's always picking on me, and what? But. I never one pick the, on you, except for when you always things. use default. That's Mr. the only default thing I ever... Lab desktop. The only thing like I Jill's ever... Jill's making fun of me, too, here <laughs> about this. But I'm going to tell you all something. I'm going to share this, because we're all family here. We don't let a lot of our family drama get out of, on the show, but this is some real family <laughs> drama that took place this week. So I, I bring up the show topic, and I'm showing them what I do in my terminal, and then they are like, we don't do any changes to our terminal. <laughs> These two people who make fun of me constantly for leaving everything <laughs> default don't do anything with their terminal that's fun. And I was just so disappointed. <laughs> so, so disappointed. For those who are curious of what uh, Ryan does on his terminal, so I'm going to have a, you can see the visual screenshot, Ryan. You can see what he's got 
in the visuals. Gorgeous. And it's 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 all right. Mm-hmm. And I would show you what mine looks like, except that if you just load the default console, then that's you it. You're done. It. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so you don't. I don't need to show that because it's just automatic. Now it is it is kind of funny that I I don't change that much necessarily, but I do change a few things. Like I do add transparency sometimes, not every time. I so I and sometimes I do have to turn it into dark mode depending on the distro and the uh, terminal that I have to use. But I always want dark mode. I don't understand why anybody would want light mode. But I guess and I've I've I understand it. Some people would need to use it for different preferences, but at the same time, default should be dark in a terminal. I'm just saying. Anyway, so, <laughs> but there are a lot of things you can customize without having to change the different like uh, profiles or go into like the nitty gritty of stuff because you can have, uh, most of these applications have either a hamburger menu or a, a main menu system that you can configure just going through the preferences. So I think that that's one th- note that if you want to customize it, you don't have to go into like different skins and stuff like that. You can check out uh, most of your different emulators will have the option, especially if you're using console, which is the best and most powerful uh, emulator for terminals that you should definitely check out because it's the best. Oh, and that one, has, uh, <laughs> that one has a lot of features. Oh. Tilex, Terminator, those are way, way better options. Okay, Tilex way and Terminator better. are good. <laughs> yes, those are good. Console oh. just best happens to be best. Emulators. Console is good. <laughs> and, and I will say I like your tip because it's true that when we're going to go through all these different things you can do to really make your terminal look awesome. And I like the terminal. If you don't like the terminal, you like staying in the GUI stuff, you can do that in Linux 99.9% of the time now. You very rarely have to touch it. But the terminal is faster, to Jill's point, in a lot of cases and more reliable, I find, even with updates and other things, even in, in the so-called stable distros and things out there. But if you just open your terminal and go to the hamburger menu or preferences, you have a ton of options right there you don't have to install anything extra that we're going to talk about you got title bars font size themes color spacing transparency unless you have a distro that just comes with a really crappy terminal that doesn't have all that stuff but every terminal i've played with that i can think of in the recent years has at least all of these options built in but like michael and jill they may not think to go in there and actually change the defaults very what are you talking about i change Uh, everything all the time except for my terminal so the <laughs> yeah. so I, I I didn't really think about it being a big deal until we had this conversation and when it's Ryan was like, deal. Hey, we're gonna talk about this. And I'm Aww. like, Yes, I don't change it that much. And he's talking like, What do you use? Fish or Z S H? And I'm like, uh, bash, because that's what it comes by default. <laughs> yeah. And to my defense, Ryan, I actually often do change the theming of the terminal to match my desktop theming. Uh, such as, you know, with using transparency to see through to my wallpaper and changing the font size and colors. I'm a bit old school minimal, and that's because my early u- years of using u- Unix and literally leap BBSs where you didn't want to have a trace to yourself. Gotcha. It, it, it was a thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hate to do this, but I'd like to introduce the Tux Digital Bell of Shame. I had to step out of the camera to pick <laughs> That's it. That's what you did. And I would like to <laughs> ring the Bell of Shame right now for Jill and Michael. <laughs> that was good. Okay. Oh. Okay. So now so that wait, can... wait a minute. Wait a minute. We have to figure this out. I feel if like we're going to have a student in your school. <laughs> right. But if we're going to have the Bell of Shame, then. We both, we, me and Jill also have to get our own bell so that we can, you know, you can't you be. have thought of that before this episode. <laughs> I thought of it. You did. Oh, my I goodness. Win. Yes, you have the bell of shame and it's been rung. So, well, Jill, you guys yes. do some minimal changes to your terminals. and yeah. But now after this episode, you're going to take the time to do some proper terminal hacking, right? Well, uh, okay, I, I'm pretty sure I can speak for Jill. You you have in the past done a lot of customizations, right? Yeah. 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 So I, I've done as well. Like, it's the same kind of like, once you like stop um, distro hopping, it's kind of the same thing. You know, you've already played with it so many times and you don't want to mm-hmm. customize it anymore. And I think the reason... The reason why Ryan is able to customize his terminal so much is that he doesn't do anything else to the rest of his system. <laughs> yeah, so he has time so, to yeah. customize his terminal, unlike me and Michael that spend hours uh, uh, you know, customizing our desktop theming and right, making it look pretty. We're customizing our workflow, and then yeah. the terminal is like, yes. okay, we just don't have time for that one. <laughs> I leave my desktop like God made it, and I 
customize my terminal to what I want. You know? What? Yeah. What? Why not leave the, leave the terminal to how it was made? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. like, what does that the mean? Ter- the terminal is made to be changed. You know, Aww. it's meant to be customized. Yeah, it's meant to be edited. Your desktop. Sure. Somebody already figured out all the colors. Yeah, and for sure. There's, that's why there's no that. there's no configuration panels in any of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good point, Michael. I'm well, talking about no here. <laughs> And to that end, you can actually change your default ter- terminal, yes, to one that looks more pretty. Maybe not everyone likes a console like <laughs> Michael. That, that they are wrong, but that's, <laughs> that might be true. <laughs> For instance, uh, a real elite hacker like myself, I use Kitty. Uh, Kitty is very fast and is a GPU accelerated terminal emulator and it's amazing it is organized like a tiling window manager which i do like those like rat poison uh <laughs> so only, you know, only jill <laughs> yeah. yep but one of my favorite things about kitty is actually the beautiful neon colors of the fonts and that are easy to read there's neon pink neon yellow neon green neon blue and um, I actually do go into the kitty.com configuration file and adjust the default font size to 32. So it's much bigger. So I can see it with one eye. And it just makes it easier for me to read. And I've just been impressed with kitty because it just brings up the program so quickly. Like Inksy, for instance, that we've demonstrated before on our tips. Um, yeah. Inksy, uh, TAC F. Uh, system stats come up really quickly in the terminal because it is G- GPU accelerated. Is the reason you no, like Kitty thing. is because it's yeah. very jellical? Aww. Jelli- jellical? 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 Is that, <laughs> is that, was that what you were going with there on that terrible dad joke? <laughs> no, it's, okay, for, th- for some people who get that reference. People are booing in our patron chat, by the way. They're that writing boo. 100%, 100% justified. If you don't get it, 100% justified. If you do get it, also 100% justified <laughs> because yeah. it's a reference to the musical Cats. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Well, actually, yes. it's a reference to the pitch meeting making fun of the movie based on the musical Cats. <laughs> <laughs> so you just got so the yes. bell of shame again for knowing the musical cats. No, I watched. Oh the my pitch gosh! Meeting. I just That's told you I watched, terrible. If you've not seen Pitch Meeting, you're gonna watch it after the show. I'm uh, sending it to you. Absolutely. You shame, to. Michael. You have yeah, to. You, you'll understand that you're gonna have to revert that bell of shame as soon as you watch this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and even our one of our uh, reviewers in chat, John, he said only thing about Kitty is no mouse support out of the box. Yeah, that's what I like about it, and it works really nice under rat poison. <laughs> yeah, she uses rat poison, which means there's no mouse at all, so she's going to be yeah. fine with Kitty. <laughs> that is hilarious. Uh, there's also a lot of other terminals that you could switch to if you wanted to. There's a lot of applications, like uh, Ryan mentioned Terminator and Tilix. There's also yeah. Quake yes. or Yaquake, like I use, which is the drop-down version of console. And then there's a lot of other ones. There's even like GPU accelerated, like you were talking about, Jill. Pretty sure you said Kitty was GPU accelerated. Correct. There's yeah. also Alacrity, which is the same kind of thing yeah. as GPU accelerated. And there's so many different options of terminals. There's even Retro Term if you want to make your computer mm-hmm. look like one of my the favorites. 70s for some reason. Yes. And <laughs> it's cool that you can do it. And of course, for Jill likes reason, it because it's retro. Of course you would. <laughs> For some well, reason, there's so many great reasons for that. Like, I love all of these. I guess that's one of the pieces I want to leave people with is don't just accept your default terminal emulator. There are so many cool options out there and I want to make the terminal with, more fun. Knowing yeah. that I told Ryan, don't just accept the defaults of your desktop environment. Customize it. <laughs> yeah. I, cha- I changed the wallpaper. That, that makes it yeah. mine at the point it's that true. I... It's Actually, true. Actually, it's funny because the... My screen right now has two default wallpapers on it, so I didn't even do, I didn't even do that. Aww. Uh, well, I'm I glad love- your screenshot at least had yeah. the wallpaper change. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go. it's got the one screen has the wallpaper. The other yeah. two are default. About 50% of the time I use Kitty, and about the other 50% of the time I use actually still use the classic X term. Yeah. And then I enjoy E term, the Enlightenment terminal emulator. Because that one is really pretty and you can do transparency. It was one of the first, actually, that you could do transparency in the background and then add your own uh, uh, wallpaper in it. And I also love cool retro term because I love my terminal looking like an old school IBM XT on a CRT screen. I like that that project (laughs) exists and that I don't have to use it. (laughs) <laughs> because uh, not that I just don't like that that style, it just it kind of like throws me off a little bit with the like scanning lines it does. 
Uh, the other, like these, these are all great applications, and there's so many different features that all of them have. Like Tilex has, as you would imagine, a tiling terminal. It's so, so good. Mm-hmm. Very if you're nice. SSHing great. into multiple machines, that tiling that's so easily accessible in Tilex is absolutely amazing. Like when I'm updating our servers plus my own servers that I have and I'm going through the process of updating everything, I can have SSH terminals up everywhere in Tilex and have all of those machines running simultaneously and be monitoring them. It's so beautiful. Tilex is amazing. Yeah, there's a lot of great ones. So whatever you're using, it's if it works for you, that's great. If you're just using the default um, like me, then you can switch and try it out. Unless it's console, then you don't have to because the console's awesome because it has tiling and tabs and everything. It is want. good. It is a good terminal <laughs> default. You got to play with the others, even if you go back to it. But I know there are people out there like, I hate bloat. You know, everything is bloat. That's their favorite thing. Like, it doesn't matter what it is. It's and bloat. usually it's and like two kilobytes that make yeah, it bloat. Yeah, usually it's not bloat at all. So I want to recommend to those people <laughs> to immediately go s- install terminology. This oh, yeah, that is, is real bloat. The reason why I want people who don't like bloat to install terminology is because this will reset your expectations for what is bloat. <laughs> this has a really heavy it GUI is. on top of it that is you know, going to help you. You could right click and get this nice menu that's a pop out with paste and set titles and all of the options right there. It's actually really cool. I like the terminal, mm-hmm. um, but it's called terminology. So go check that one out if you want a GUI while you're in your terminal. If you want a nice little GUI 3D animated box or whatever it is there, uh, you could check that one out. The other cool thing you could do is change your host name. So this starts getting into that Leet Hacksaw, Jill. Absolutely when you start doing this stuff here. So <laughs> customizing your terminal, change the prompt. So you could do something like host name. So elite hacker would be what you would type after your host name. And if you want to make Naturally. that permanent, you could do sudo host name, CTL set host name, elite hacker. But if you don't want to make it permanent, which you might want to not want to do when you're first playing with it, just do host name and then type something you want in there, anything you want. Uh, and that's a really fun thing to do. Michael, what is your host name on your machine? Mine's properly set to Tux Digital. Show respect for the company. Do you change your host name? Or is it Dell 36294201, whatever is default? So um, let me real quick check your screenshot to see if it actually says Tux Digital on it uh, because I don't believe you. Oh. Your host name is Tux Digital. Dang it. Okay. Yeah. He got me. He got me. <laughs> he got you. So I have a <laughs> rapper. If you want to talk about host names, I have a different host name for each device that I have. And it's because, and I have mm. a scheme. Like a lot of people have different like ways they do a consistent scheme of their host names. And mine are all based on Egyptian mythology. Oh, and, cool. And that sounds really complicated and like interesting, except that you once you find out that they're all characters from Stargate. That's actually where it all ah. comes from. <laughs> ah. Yeah. You can, so you can walk like an Egyptian. No, clap no, like. It's, it, <laughs> no. Uh, I typically don't do that. I just name it the name of the character. <laughs> That's pretty much it. But um, so I, unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't see the screenshot in time to notice that I was going to get um, shamed, uh, a bell of shame again. And uh, well, so unfortunately, the patrons are saying that you don't actually name your host name. They're saying that your host name they saw is Windows D three B eight something like that. Ah. So I don't know. We don't know who to believe, the patrons or you, Michael. But that's what we're hearing out there. But another cool thing, okay, you could do mm-hmm. laptop named uh, desktop local host. So maybe I didn't <laughs> on one of them. <laughs> I love how you went and yeah. checked, and they were right. Yeah, one yeah. of uh, they're okay. half right. One of them was yeah. named like I wanted it to be, and the other ones was not. So I need yeah. to fix that. <laughs> yep. So some other cool things you could do when you guys decide to finally get your terminals looking like proper Linux folk here is get NeoFetch mm-hmm. and Fitch. Absolutely. Like yeah. these are two separate things. Now NeoFetch is really cool because it goes and fetches information about your system. So every time you open your terminal you get that readout. That actually is very useful to me because I change my part so often and I'm like in the middle of a video 
And I'm like, what machine? What's in my machine again? Yeah. What graphics card? <laughs> I forget which graphics card I have again. So I'll just pull up a terminal and it's like, oh, there it is right there. NeoFetch. Uh, you can get all your information. So I like NeoFetch. It's really cool. It just gives you a whole readout of your basic information when you first open the terminal. And then you could, of course, clear it and, and open other terminals in Tilex and it's not going to run each time. And then you've got Fish, which is just an interactive helper that's amazing. It just tries to do predict a lot of the commands and things that you're going to type and just saves you a tremendous mm -hmm. amount of time. Like I love fish. I can't live without fish. Once I found it, it was my thing. So I don't know if you, either of you have used fish in the past, but yes. one of my favorites of all time. Mm -hmm. I, I think fish is great. And then ZSH is also great. Now there are some people who would uh, have a debate between which one is better between ZSH and fish. And typically the response is because fish is not POSIX compliant. And I don't know why that matters because I have never had a real big issue with using fish. <laughs> so, you know, whatever it is, what it is, if y'all want to, you know, discuss that, feel free to do so in the comments and let us know why the POSIX compliance is important. But I think fish is fantastic and ZSH is also fantastic. They're, they have a lot of similar features and the predicting of what you're going to type is so cool that yeah. it is, you know, it's, it's kind of where, you know, in terms of bash usage, you can do autocompletes with tab. And that's great, yeah. but you have to know what you're wanting to autocomplete. And with Fish and ZSH, it's kind of like giving you a potential, like this is this might be what you're typing. Is it? So you can have like a guide before you click tab. And that is just really, really cool. So there are many great features of both of these. And I have used both of these often. The, I don't use them right now because that would require customizing my terminal. And as Ryan <laughs> uh, said, I I let to, I like to keep the terminal as is intended, but the way they made it. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. So I don't know how you all add NeoFetch or these things to your terminal, but I just do nano.bashrc, and then I mm -hmm. add yes. them to the end of the file. So for me, though, this is very important. You have to put NeoFetch, if you have both of these installed, to execute before fish. If you do it the other way, NeoFetch never executes. So yeah. when you do the nano.bashrc and you want, once you've installed NeoFetch and fish, then you just literally type NeoFetch fish there, um, but make sure NeoFetch is first, just as a little tip there. So he gives me a hard time about not customizing, but sometimes I do customize. Now, the thing that I like the most about console, now, I, other terminal emulators can do it as well, but I know the most about console because that's what I use the most, and it has the ability to do profile switching. And what profile switching is in console is the ability to have a customization of the appearance, the functionality, the shortcuts, whatever you want, and you can switch back and forth how, whenever you want to by having multiple profiles. And you can also duplicate profiles and like sort, kind of tweak them and all sorts of stuff. So... I do have custom profiles, but I made them like a two years ago and I haven't changed them since. And so that's kind of like, it's not a super customization, but the ability to do that is super awesome. So if you want to have a blur at some point or not have a blur, you can switch different between profiles and just customize it however you want. And that's a cool thing that a lot of uh, terminal emulators have. And it's something that I would suggest checking out because you could always have a duplicate of the default and if you want to go back to the default, you can do so. And then also respect the decisions as a developer, as Ryan stated so eloquently earlier. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> and Jill, I don't think we could really wrap up this topic of properly pimping your terminal until we talk about accessibility. So talk us Absolutely. through some accessibility changes people can make within their terminal. Okay, something that I use because I am visually impaired, half blind. I it, like we were talking about earlier. I adjust the font size and the font colors in the configuration files or menu of the terminal. Unless I'm I'm using Kitty, I don't have to adjust adjust the colors, <laughs> which is out nice. of curiosity. <laughs> what colors do you prefer when you're adjusting them outside of Kitty? Do you prefer like neon colors or like pinks and greens, or are you going for? I the... actually do the neon yeah. colors. Okay, yeah, That's what I, I like was pinks, figuring. greens, yellows, uh, bright blues yeah because they're just visually easier to see and yep. i also use uh, text-to-speech programs like eSpeak for reading documents in the terminal and there's also festival for text-to-speech which are really great programs and uh, if you need help a uh, screen reader for terminal there are several options one is the orca screen reader which works great in the gnome terminal 
and Yasser, which is actually a general purpose TTY screen reader for all Unix-like operating systems. That one works really well. I've uh, played around with that one. And then one of the most popular ones is actually SpeakUp. Uh, SpeakUp runs in kernel space and speaks text as it is written to a console. So awesome. those make life a lot easier for me and will help will should help a lot of people that, you know, have special needs. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, and I do see some folks in the chat asking about various multiplex terminals here, but we covered mm. of course, I think the terminator we talked about. Uh did we did we cover Tmux? Tmux would be we didn't an cover option T-Mux, there as well. That's another one. Yep. Yeah, and another good one. There's so many options, we really can't cover everything. Everything. <laughs> and that's also kind of, we, we sort of skipped over the ZSH versus Bash versus Fish. I'm pretty sure we did an episode of DL and the previously to more in depth about that particular thing. Um, I could just be imagining that because we've had many episodes, if you've noticed, they were on 287. So I, I, I'm pretty sure we did have one of those discussions. But uh, there's so many different things to talk about in this space that we kind of had to narrow it down a little bit and we wanted to just focus on what is the most important pieces like how many there's so many different terminals that people don't even think about that there are and also it's very critical to point out that people look at the terminal as being a difficult thing to use and at first at 100 percent, i understand why you have that perspective it is uh, kind of cumbersome and there's a little bit of an overwhelming feeling because you don't know where to start and so that's that's totally fair. But the the reason why people typically say it's easy, it's not really easier. It's more efficient. I think that's a better way of describing it. Uh, using the terminal is more efficient to do a lot of things, unless you're talking about FFmpeg. Then never, no, it's not. But if you're talking <laughs> if you're talking about you know doing upgrades and st- and installing stuff, it is a lot more efficient yeah. because you can do them much faster, and you can do these sure. things like the auto predicting and the auto complete, and it makes this thing a, a much uh, easier thing to use in comparison to having to click everything. But once, but you do have to have that uh, experience of learning how it works. So when I see people say that it's easier to do, I always want to put in like an asterisk and like reply and say, if they've already used it before, yes, it's probably a little bit easier. But, you know, so yeah. we just want to make people know that the terminal isn't as bad as it seems. I mean, you can get incredibly complicated, but the very beginning of using the terminal there's a lot of simple commands that are really easy to get used to doing. They just require a little bit of time to you know, try them all out. Well, that's why I think this topic's mm-hmm. important. I, I love that you mentioned that because we have so many new people who listen to the show, new to Linux, listening to this show. And the terminal is one of those things that I think creates a lot of panic and fear. Now, I grew up with DOS. So when I was mm-hmm. doing my Linux journey, there wasn't any fear at all. It's like, oh, this is kind of familiar because that's what I grew up with. But a lot of people don't grow up with that anymore. But yeah. the terminal can be a ton of fun. And I think part of having that fun and removing some of that fear with it is going in there and customizing it and making it your own. Change some things, make it look like something you're comfortable with. And then it just becomes yet another thing that's fully editable, configurable, and that you can play with in Linux. And the GUI is always there. And the GUI has gotten so much better across the board in Linux that pretty much everything you can do with the GUI now. But it's so much cooler to show your friends when you're doing it through the terminal because then you look like elite hacker. Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> and also just to uh, clarify... We did do an episode about that. I actually, when I commented in, in the chat, lab chat, we actually had someone say that we did do one of those episodes. So I looked it up. It was episode 188. So if you want to get more details about the, the difference between ZSH, Fish, and Bash, you can check out that episode where we go into a much mm, more detail. Nice. Of course we covered it. We've covered of everything. Of course we did. <laughs> you know, some people want to be elite hacker, but sometimes you want to keep the bad hackers out. And you know how you yeah. do that, Michael? Bitwarden. Bitwarden. This episode. I mean, <laughs> this. That's sure. <laughs> <laughs> This episode of Destination Linux is brought to you by Bitwarden. Get started right now with your free account at bitwarden.com slash tux, a password manager software that allows you to have peace of mind knowing that your online accounts are secure. Bitwarden provides you the tools to store all your passwords in a secured vault, auto-generate those passwords, and now your usernames 
which is amazing because if you have your username, same use the same one everywhere, they've got 50% of your login credentials. So now you can rotate your usernames and you don't have to remember all the different ones you create because Bitwarden does that for you. You can access your data across many types of devices, your web browser, mobile apps, desktop applications, and get this, all that work you did customizing your terminal, you can even open Bitwarden in your terminal through the command line. How cool is that? Bitwarden seals and encrypts your private data with end-to-end -end encryption before it ever leaves your device, so you know you're the only person with access to your data. They're constantly adding new features, including Firefox Relay, which if you don't know what that is, you need to go check it out, read about it. It's a really cool option, but they kept the price the same. Number one, you can get started for free, but for $10 a year, you get services like a gigabyte of encrypted file storage, two-step login key with YubiKey, U2F, Duo, Vault Health Reports, Bitwarden Authenticator, Priority Customer Support, and all the new features they keep adding in, like Firefox Relay, Username Rotation, all of that. Same price, $10 a year. You need to jump on it. So go to bitwarden.com slash tux to get started. And thank you to Bitwarden for sponsoring this episode of Destination Linux. So we have some really interesting news to talk about this week, and that is a water cooling solution for Linux laptops. Yes, that sounds kind of weird, but we're, we're gonna get to it. It is very interesting. So earlier this year, Tuxedo Computers introduced a new laptop called the Stellaris 15 Gen 4, and it came with the Tuxedo Aquarius, which is an external water cooling system. We didn't talk about it at the time because it was only for the Windows users of that version of the laptop. But now, gross, hmm. yeah, gross exactly. But now they have introduced a mm -hmm. new support for Linux, and they actually built the Linux drivers themselves and built their own interface to do like the Tuxedo Control Center that allows you to tweak the settings for this water cooling system. And this is very, very cool. And it's, it's, it allows you to control all sorts of things, even like fan speed of the machine in, in a conjunction with the water cooling. I mean, it's a very cool... We and actually, the LED light strip, Wendy, that yes. would be very important to Wendy, knowing <laughs> you could important. control Rainbow the RGB moment. light. <laughs> yes, she loves very that. Very important to Wendy, there. yeah. <laughs> I I want this. I don't know why I want this so bad, but I want this. You got to... We'll have it in the show notes. You got to check out the video that goes along with this where the person is actually dumping the water out of the laptop as part of the, when you're done with the water cooling solution. It's wild, mm -hmm. it kind of blows my mind. The whole thought of like, water near laptop bad, you know, and then exactly. taking your laptop and dumping the water back out into a bottle when you're done. It's so cool though, like it, it really, they, it's really well done. The way I'm describing it sounds kind of crazy because it is a crazy idea, but <laughs> they did it, they did it really, really well. And my favorite part is they've made this software available as an open source package. So anybody can go in there and now edit this. And I'm just thinking this would be great base work for controls of other types of fans, for people who have water cooling in their desktops and other things to maybe control those in the future as well. But I just love that Tux did this. I think this is a really unique idea. And why would this be useful to somebody? Well, if you are in a situation where you're having to do very high end graphical work, animations, those type of things on a laptop on the go. And this particular laptop is a desktop replacement. Maybe you have to travel to different client locations to do that type of stuff. And you don't need all the noise and things that fans, because if you've ever used a machine like the Omen, HP Omen, for instance, that has a discrete GPU in it, it can get real, real loud when you start yeah. gaming and things in there. <laughs> that fan. So <laughs> exactly. It starts spinning up super loud and things. It can be very distracting to people who are doing creative work and stuff. So, I mean, I could come up with some reasons why you need it, but the real reason you need it is because it's just freaking cool to have water cooling in your laptop, man. I mean, yeah. it's just awesome. The real reason is because it's awesome. Exactly. Aww, it's just it's like, awesome. It's like customizing your terminal awesome. And I think exactly. it's really cool that the Linux app, you can actually, you have more flexibility with the control of this, the fan speed because there's a, a nice little slider. And instead of just having the pre, predefined 50%, 65%, and fast, like on Windows, you have a customized one for Linux. <laughs> it's very cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I want, you know, we talked about the laptops in the last episode that we wanted to get our hands on. This is one and the separate water cooling kit that I would love to buy in the future just to play with and watch how it all works. But they've done yeah. something really cool here. Tuxedo, you have my attention. You were talking earlier about how the idea of having water next to your laptop or in your laptop is scary. And this one is like, you're supposed to. 
And even when I look at it, I still kind of get a little bit of a cringe vibe, even though yeah. it's designed for this purpose. I still, like, yeah, I know. So, like, <laughs> so I mean, really you have awful. drain plugs in the back, like a Jeep Wrangler has on the bottom <laughs> yeah. of its floors for when you're going mudding. I mean, it's just it's so cool to have that in a laptop. I just yeah. Think yeah. It's so- <laughs> And it's That's just nice awesome. not having to, you know, take off the back of the laptop and unscrew all the hundreds of screws, you know. Yes, to, to hook they it built up. it into the back so yeah. that you can just easily quick snap it in. And yeah, it's, nice. it's really cool. So now that you have some extreme Leet Hacksaw skills, it's time to learn how to fight criminals in a virtual world in a game. You get to play a bounty hunter who frees a corrupt city from mayhem and felony. Otherwise known as Michael and Ryan. <laughs> Whoa! I'm mayhem, I guess. Shots fired. I guess I'm mayhem. So. That means I'm felony? Yeah. I think. Yeah. I'm not sure. Can we make shirts? <laughs> mayhem <laughs> and felony. We just have our faces with those words attached to it. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> so uh, shooting down criminal gangs with a little bit of snark and old school 16-bit cyberpunk graphics uh, thrown in. You are in the game Hunt Down. An awesome 80s sci-fi action-inspired side-scroller shoot em up <laughs> And uh, Hunt Down actually has over 1,623 overwhelmingly positive reviews. And there are so That's many reasons lot. why. Yeah. It not only works great on the Steam Deck, but honestly is a perfect platform for this game. Absolutely. Of course, you can play it on anything, on your PC too. <laughs> I This is the type of game that I look forward to playing on our trip to scale, for instance. Michael and I are going to be stuck on long plane trips headed to California for scale. Yes. And one of the things we both talked about is using our Steam decks, now that Michael finally has his, during that trip. And this type of game is the perfect game for that. Because honestly, yeah, when you're at an airport and they're... You know, you got all this chaos kind of going on and everything else. You need a game you could quickly get in and get out of. I definitely don't want something online and that type of stuff in that oh, environment. Oh, yeah, for sure. So these type of games to me are just the perfect portable perfect. game for you to play. Yeah. And reminds me of like Contra and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. This is absolutely something I want to put into my Steam Deck for that trip. It looks pretty fun. Absolutely. Well, I had fun. I played uh, the the tough girl with snark, Anaconda. It's a play on words, snark, Anaconda. Anaconda. <laughs> and, nice. and I played it in story mode, and it also has arcade mode as well. And I honestly, I was just so impressed with how polished this game is, you know, from the cyberpunk graphics to the electronic cinematic soundtrack to the snarky characters to the menu design. It is just really a joy to play. I really enjoyed it. And normally I don't play, you know, these kind of games, honestly. So for me, this I'm one was try- just so well done. I'm making Jill play all these violent <laughs> horror games yeah. and everything else. Yeah. Jill's like, I normally play nice games, but yeah. Ryan keeps <laughs> making me play these. But this one, I just, I feel like I would get into and absolutely love to play with the both of you too when we get to yeah. scale because there's co-op yes. opportunities here in this. Absolutely. So this would be fun. We all practice well, me and Michael practice on the plane ride. We get there yeah. and we show, show Jill our mad <laughs> leak gaming skills. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And it's also, did you notice, Ryan, how the cinematics, how amazing they are in the gameplay? Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yep. very well done. It really puts you in the game. And to me, honestly, it's a hands down 10 out of 10 game. It really Whoa. is. <laughs> there you go. I was nice. very impressed. Nice. Well, you know, I was shocked this week to find out that my two great friends, Jill and Michael, do not do any customization to their terminal. And I told them at the end when we were doing the pre-show, I said, no more secrets, Michael and Jill. No (laughs) Uh more secrets. Wow. So you found no more secrets. (laughs) Yes. So I went looking and found our software spotlight called No More Secrets, which fits perfectly with this episode Uh, This is just something fun to do with the terminal. So we were talking about the terminal. And if you're a fan of Sneakers, the movie, then you can install NMS or No More Secrets. This app takes the commands you're running in the terminal and recreates them in the famous data decryption effects seen on screen in the 1992 hacker movie Sneakers. It is absolutely pointless. 
Uh, but it looks really cool, and you can always use it to impress your friends by telling them you're running some ultra super secret hack, and they'll be none the wiser, especially if they're a Windows user or something else. But so just watch the screen scroll and be like, "Wow!" Uh, go through there. And the other cool thing is when you're running this, it does all the decryption, but eventually it mm -hmm. decrypts itself, and you see the actual command that you ran. So cool! Uh, so that you can keep using it. It's just a really cool, fun thing to go check out, uh, but will not actually help you become elite hacker. Well, not with that attitude. Make you Aww. look like one. It would look you, make you look like one. <laughs> There's so many options to have like really fun effects. We need to do like an episode of like terminal, just n terminal stuff Absolutely. that you can do with just having fun with it. Uh, and this is yeah. one of the, this is a great example. Uh, when you, you mentioned how this was kind of like, we're going to be talking about no more secrets. Like, oh, okay. So when I looked it up, like, oh, this is awesome. I can't wait to install this and use it for no <laughs> reason. <laughs> I was running it this week for no reason, exactly. multiple times through the week, just to impress myself, I guess. Yeah. I, I loved it. Yeah. It's just yeah. fun. It rem reminds you of the movie and everything, so it's just fun. Yeah. Also, another thing to check out is the tip of the week. We're going to talk about some more terminal stuff, and this is going to be talking about how to use and interact with your terminal in a you know, brief sense. And sometimes you have these applications or commands that you're running and they just don't work right and you need to cancel them for some reason. Maybe you need to cancel it because you type the wrong thing in and it's not going to do what you want it to do. Or maybe it just gets sluggish and it's, it stalls and you want to cancel it. Now, there are a couple of ways to do this. And one of them is Control C. No, not copy. In terminals, what it does, Control C, is the ability to interrupt the command and essentially like cancel it, abort, abort it, that sort of thing. Whereas Control Z, also not undo. In terminals, what it does is it allows you to kind of stop the command from happening and suspend it and putting it in the background. So it doesn't really kill the command. It just sort of pauses it and puts it in the background. So it's not going to continue to do anything, but it will be taking up a little bit of resources while your computer's still running. So if you want to do it where it absolutely kills it, Control C is the option, but sometimes Control C is not going to work with depending on what you're doing. You might need to use Control Z, so we want to give you both of those things. And if you're curious, how do you copy and undo? Well, you can't really undo necessarily in the terminal, but you can copy, and that's Control Shift C, and there you go. So when I first got into using computers and terminal, that that's a good note about earlier we were talking about the easy, you know, the terminal's easy and stuff like that. That's the part that kind of confused me where every shortcut that you would expect to work does not do what you think it does. And mm -hmm. you have to add shift mm -hmm. and then it will do what you think it does. So, control shift V yeah. to pace times. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. yeah. There's a lot of those kinds of things, but if you, if you have any kind of issue or you need to cancel an application or cancel a command, control C or control Z will help you. So this week, Durhans has hooked us up with all the conferences you should be getting prepped for coming up. The 23rd Debian Conference is being held in Prizren, Kosovo, from Sunday the 17th to Sunday the 24th, July 2022. So that's happening today. Yep, but you don't want to leave us yet. Ooh, yeah. But after that, you want to go and you could go to it. But it goes all the way over. through the 24th. Mm. So you got a lot of time to go join some of those in the Debian Conference there. We have... Guadec, which is going on, the 25th Guadec for the GNOME community, in-person or virtual, July 20th through the 25th in Guadalajara, Mexico. We have Nest with Fedora, which mm -hmm. is virtual, August 4th through 6th, and we are media partners there. Yeah. Definitely want to check out Nest with Fedora. We've been tweeting about it, talking about it. This is a cool one to get on your calendar, August 4th through the 6th. The most important one, perhaps, though, if you're interested in meeting Jill, Michael, <laughs> or myself... Scale. is to go to scale because we're going to be there in person, not virtually, in person, July 28th through the 31st in Los Angeles, California. You got to come visit our booth. It's number 901. Don't forget that number, number 901. You can get some awesome swag and prizes while they last. They've all arrived at Jill's house. It's still a secret. We're not going to share it all, but Jill, <laughs> yes. you've got all the swag and stuff. Tons that we've of ordered swag at your and house. merch. Is it cool? Yeah. I mean, tell it's us. Is it it's incredible. It's going to it's gonna put our booth in the top 10. That's for sure. <laughs> nice. Go. Nice. There's yes. also a lot of the swag I want to keep. So be sure to get there early because I'm going to at least, I'm going to store a couple of them. We're yes. all keeping some of them for ourselves. We should at least <laughs> yes. get a couple. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, I, I've been, I'm, my rule of thumb, I just take one of each thing. 
you, you could grab two, Jill. If you okay. Yeah, it's okay. We'll, okay. We'll, we'll yeah. I wanna... <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we got some fun swag we'll give away. And yeah. Jill hooked up in, in combination with Scale, hooked everybody up to get a promo code to get 50% off your registration. So yes. if you use the promo code TUX, you're going to get 50% off your registration for Scale. Woo-hoo. So if you're going to Scale, make sure you use that code to get that money off, save you some dollar bills. Mm. And you come get some free swag. That's worth it. Even if you're traveling halfway across the world right there, just to come get yes. some of the swag. Get some Tux digital merch and DL merch yes. for $2,000 of a flight to <laughs> and a worth hotel. It. Oh. <laughs> totally worth it. And look at our yeah. beautiful banners that Michael made for us for our booth. They're incredible. Of yeah. all the shows and our network, just amazing. I would not say this publicly because I don't <laughs> want Michael to get a big head, but... Michael knocked it out of the park with this stuff. Yeah. It did an amazing job. Don't tell him I said so. But it was <laughs> beautiful work. It was kind of weird how it was this the podcast was so quiet for a few seconds. I didn't hear anything. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> I muted you. I muted you. So you oh, went, okay. You went, okay, okay, that's yeah. what it was. <laughs> yes. Aww. You have to go back and watch it to hear it. Uh, no. but that's it. <laughs> Those are all the events you want to make sure you get on your calendar and That's the end of the show. So a big thank you to each and every one of you for supporting us by watching or listening to Destination Linux. However you do it, we love your faces. We're here every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern live at tuxdigital.com slash live. And the best part, everyone is invited to watch the recording of Destination Linux each and every week. We can't wait to see you in the chat. We also have our awesome patrons with us in the patron-only post show that we're going to have right after the show in our 60,000-square-foot virtual stadium. And you can join us in that patron post show by going to tuxdigital.com slash contribute and becoming a patron of the Destination Linux podcast. Also, if you're not able to watch the live stream, then you can check out the unedited versions as a patron because those are available to all patrons immediately after the show. And if you want to support the channel and you want to get some awesome merch, you can go to tuxdigital.com slash store and you can get stuff like uh, t-shirts, mugs, hoodies, stickers, coasters, hats, all sorts of great stuff by going to tuxdigital.com slash store. And be sure to also check out the new collection we made for Sinister Wendy. We'll have that on the store as well. It's awesome stuff. You get you, basically... Anything you can think of, well, not anything, but most of what you can think of, you get an awesome thing of how we got, we capture the essence of Wendy with that new collection. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so check that out, tuxdigital.com. The, now, the collection itself is called Sinister Wendy. We're not calling Wendy Sinister Wendy. No, Wendy's Wendy. awesome. That's her new <laughs> name. That's, that's just the name of she the collection. She wears fight tape, yeah, Michael. Yeah. Like, you got to be careful. Just the collection. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was, awesome. I was referring She's to just, so nice. just the art piece Super slash nice. selection. That's all I was talking about. <laughs> yes. and make sure to check out all our wonderful shows here on text digital we have this week in linux the Doc- dos geek channel the pseudo show linux out loud hardware addicts game sphere and our virtual linux user group linux saloon so head to textdigital.com and subscribe to all these great shows and don't forget to leave a rating on your favorite app so others can discover the power of open source and keep those penguins marching and the full monty of linux and open source awesome sauce everybody have a great week and remember that the journey itself is just as important as the Destination Linux Extreme! Extreme! (laughs) Extreme! Extreme. (laughs) Love it.